This is chapter 10, chromosomes, mitosis, and meiosis. Okay. You notice as you go through here, some of the uh, material, matter of fact, the majority of the material in this PowerPoint is in red. The material that's presented in red is stuff that you probably want to pay attention to because there's a good chance you'll see it on the exam. Okay, okay the, uh, we have this term chromatin. Chromatin refers to long thin strands of DNA plus protein and this is the form that the DNA is in when the cell is not dividing. So when the cell is not dividing, the DNA is in the form of chromatin. Now, in your cells, somatic cells would be your body cells. In your body cells you have about six feet of chromatin packed into each nucleus. You think about how small that nucleus is inside that cell. Now I did, there's six feet of this material packed in there. That means that this chromatin really is a thin type of material, long thin material. This line down here, you mean gametes, that would refer to the egg cells and sperm cells. And of course the gametes would have about half as much chromatin. Okay. Now we've got the term chromosome. Chromosome is the very same material as the chromatin, but this time instead of being loose, uncoiled, long, thin, th thin threads, this is tightly coiled and condensed, and these chromosomes are intact only during the time of cell division. When the cell is not dividing, it is in the form of chromatin. When the cell is dividing, this DNA is in the form of chromosomes. And these chromosomes, these tightly packed, short, condensed uh, pieces of DNA, allow this DNA to move around in the cell without a lot of loss and breakage. Okay, we've got another term here, and that's the gene. And the gene is a segment of DNA that codes for a protein. Now, we look at a person or a tree, and we don't necessarily see the proteins. We see the end result of those proteins. So the type of proteins that you have determines the traits that you have, determines whether you have red hair or other than red hair. Another term that we have is genome, which is the entire set of genes in an organism. You've probably heard of the Human Genome Project. There have been uh, genome projects for almost every major crop plant as well as common laboratory, uh, laboratory animal whether it's mice, fruit flies, yeast, what have you. Okay, let's look at the organization of the DNA and the chromosomes. And starting at the most basic level, we start with the DNA. And this DNA molecule is a nucleic acid, which is made up of units called nucleotides. Now, each nucleotide consists of a phosphate, five carbon sugar called deoxyribose sugar, and one of four types of bases. The four different bases are adenine, guanine, cytosine, and thymine. Now from there, we, we go to these structures called histones. Histones are proteins that are going to attach to the DNA, and they're going to attach to the DNA by means of electrical charges. Then we have the nucleosome. A nucleosome is a group of eight histones that are wrapped, that have DNA wrapped around them. And so this nucleosome acts like a spool for the DNA to wind up on. And then we have what's called linker DNA, and linker DNA are pieces of uh, short strands of DNA between the nucleosomes. And this gives this whole apparatus some flexibility. Okay, the next level that we have is what's called packed nucleosomes, and that's where these nucleosomes will link to one another, or attach to one another, and they're going to pull in very tight, and this is going to coil up like, uh, like a rope. Then, kind of the way that the fibers in a rope are, are twisted around each other, or, or coiled up uh, to form that short condensed structure. Then we have a scaffolding protein. A scaffolding protein is going to organize this rope of uh, packed nucleosomes into very tight loops. 
and then finally we get to the structure of the chromosome itself DNA that is tightly looped and coiled to form a very compact structure so here we go we have our basic structure of the DNA then we have the individual uh, histones right here and a group of eight histones one two three four and then back behind here is another four group of eight histones with DNA wrapped around it forms a nucleosome connecting those nucleosomes is what's called linker DNA okay. so as we go up through here we have the structure starting with the basic structure of the DNA then we have our histones that are grouped into what are called nucleosomes with the linker DNA between the nucleosomes then these nucleosomes will attach to one another and pull in together very tightly and form a very tight coil these are packed nucleosomes these packed nucleosomes, this rope-like material, then loops back and forth and attaches to a scaffolding protein. Okay, this continues to condense and compact, and then finally we have the, uh, the highly condensed compact chromosome structure. So you notice the structure of this chromosome is very similar to the structure of carpet. For example, the carpet that we would have in the classroom. That carpet is made by taking fibers and looping those fibers, uh, looping those fibers around, coiling and condensing those, and then taking that, that coiled yarn and looping it back and forth and attaching it into the backing of the carpet. And so the structure of that carpet in the classroom is very similar to the structure of this chromosome. Okay. Now this is an electron micrograph of a chromosome. And one of the things to notice is how it has this fuzzy appearance to it. The reason it has that fuzzy appearance is because of the way this thing is structured. That you have this DNA material coiled and condensed and then looped back and forth into the scaffolding protein and so the edge of this are those loops that are that are uh, just like the just like the surface of the coil uh, the surface of the carpet would uh, look similar to this okay okay now let's kind of shift gears a little bit from the uh, structure and look at chromosome number chromosome number is constant within a species so almost every almost every person has 46 chromosomes in their somatic cells if someone has other than 46 chromosomes there's usually some serious problems some severe problems that go along with that uh, generally species that have a high number of chromosomes or have a high chromosome you know have a high number of chromosomes tend to have small chromosomes those with a low number of chromosomes tend to have large chromosomes as just kind of a broad uh, general general rule so the characteristics of an organism are not determined by the number of chromosomes but by the genetic information on those chromosomes okay here you notice uh, some examples of uh, chromosome numbers and the only one that I really expect you to know off the top of your head is the one for us that we have 46 chromosomes which would be 23 pair but otherwise as you look down through here notice the pattern that you see all of these numbers are even numbers and that's because these chromosomes occur as pairs called homologous pairs so notice that the total number of chromosomes is an even number. Chromosomes occur in homologous pairs that are referred to as homologs. Okay. Now let's look at this idea of diploid and haploid. Di means two. So the diploid number is abbreviated as 2n, where n is whatever the basic number is for that species. 
For example, in humans, N would be 23 different types of chromosomes that we have. In corn plant, N would be 10 different types of chromosomes. So, a diploid cell has two sets of chromosomes. So, this uh, diploid cells are cells with homologous pairs of chromosomes. The somatic cells are diploid, and the term somatic cells refers to the body cells. This is all cells other than the egg and sperm cells. Haploid, we can think of as half as many. And the haploid number is 1n, 1 times whatever the basic number is. So in humans, it would be one set of 23. In corn plant, it would be one set of 10. So the haploid cells are cells that have one chromosome from each homologous pair. The gametes are haploid cells. The gametes are the sex cells. These are the egg and sperm cells. And this term N refers to the number of chromosomes in a haploid cell. Okay. Now we have, so let's go back and look at this for just a second. So use the drawing tool and right here if we have a cell so here's a cell that is diploid we have here's a chromosome right here we'll make it a double stranded chromosome okay we have a chromosome that is homologous with this this is just just like that same size same structure and then maybe we have another chromosome over here that has the centromere near the end of the chromosome. Okay, So here's its homolog right here. It has a similar type of structure. Okay, That would be a diploid. It doesn't look much like a tube, but it's supposed to be. That would be a diploid cell. Okay, we have another cell from the same species that is haploid, and we would have one chromosome from this pair that has the centromere in the middle. We would have one chromosome from this pair that has the centromere near the end. So this cell would be a diploid cell, or 1N. Okay, so, like that. Okay, so let's go on from there. Oops, I've turned the drawing tool off, I guess. Let's go on from there. And we have what's called polyploid. So we have diploid cells, which are 2N, haploid cells that are 1N, now we've got this other category, polyploids, and we're going to look at this and realize they exist, but then we're not going to worry about them too much. So polyploids are cells that are 3N, 4N, all the way up to 8N. In other words, three sets of chromosomes, four sets of chromosomes, up to eight sets of chromosomes. So polyploid cells are cells with more than two sets of chromosomes. And these polyploids are very common in plants. It's estimated that about 80% of plant species are probably polyploid, but still most of these plant species have a mechanism that allow them to function as diploids. Okay, This condition also occurs naturally in fish and amphibians, but it is quite rare, and there's been one species, one mammal species that has been identified as being polyploid, but since that was uh, initially reported, that has been called into question. Okay. So, let's hope. Okay, in the next section, we'll start in with this. We'll look at homologous chromosomes and sister chromatids. Thank you.